had a very interesting conversation with one of my patients about her experience with her GI specialist, why he did not recommend she see a traditional Chinese medicine practitioner, and ultimately the results that she had experienced from trying traditional Chinese medicine herbs. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hein, author of the health book Master of the Day and doctor of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine. So before we jump into this video here today, there are two very important links right below the video. The first is for a free guide I've put together for daily rituals that can potentially help you add years to your life with traditional Chinese medicine. And the second is if you'd like to become a patient of mine locally in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine, check out the link below the video to reach out to my private practice. So I was in a visit with one of my patients who was coming in for GI issues. She was having some upper GI reflux and indigestion and a little bit of lower GI bowel changes, right? Some very slow sluggish stools, constipation, potentially even being once every three to five days. Now, we had a fascinating conversation because she was someone that was often stop and start with me, meaning she would start, she'd take the formula a little bit, then not take it, and on and on and on. And she was clinically an easy case for me. This is someone that in a few years, I'll refer to a junior practitioner because it's not a complex case. I can virtually guarantee the clinical result. But she was off and on because she didn't trust me, because she didn't know me yet. Now, when I probed why that was, and she said, you know, I went to see my gastroenterologist who had recommended a couple of procedures and medications. She asked, what do you think about Chinese medicine? And he happened to be Chinese, this GI doctor. And he said, I am Chinese, it's all bullshit. Now, the funny thing, which tends to be true more often than not, is that his treatment did not help her. His medications were causing her issues. She wasn't seeing any improvement. He wanted her to just take this medication till the day she died because she was older in her 70s. Frankly, he didn't seem like he cared very much. He recommended a colonoscopy and endoscopy. None of them found very much that was helping her. And the formula, no surprise, was actually fixing her issue. Her core issue had been gone for about a week or two when she took the formula. And this brings up a very important discussion that we need to talk about here today. In conventional medicine, there is a general hesitancy and a general resistance to believing that anything outside of what they do can possibly help a patient. And this has never made sense to me because if your goal as a medical provider is to help the person in front of you, then you will be happy for them, for whatever they do that makes them feel better. And so much of the time that is not true. I have a recent case of a young girl in her 20s with extensive cervical dysplasia. So she had a very strongly precancerous condition, right? Most of her cervix was covered in precancerous cells. And her recent diagnostics put her at a very high risk to the point where her physician was, her OB was recommending a procedure that would guaranteed impact her fertility. That was a surgical procedure. She would have to repeat it multiple times and the net harm to her ultimate fertility was unknown, but was virtually guaranteed. Those were her direct quote from her primary care provider. So she said, before I do that, which is irreversible, let me try something else. And she knew someone that knew me. And I said, I had experience seeing this condition improve over about a treatment period of six months. So I said, look, worst comes to worst, just get the procedure done in a year. Let's see how much progress we can make. Worst case scenario, nothing helps, no harm, no foul, right? You've just lost a few months, I'll see you once a month. I treat her for three or four months and she moves. And at this point, she had a new OB, a new gynecologist actually, that wanted her to get another pap smear to see where she was. Now, after about four months, she got that pap smear before I had advised, but lo and behold, the pap smear came back 100% clear. No sign of the dysplasia that was there before. And her, Medical provider said she had never seen anything like that before. Did she ever reach out or was she curious what I did? She remarked that she was to this patient, but she never reached out. She never was like, what did you do? I've never seen that before in my entire career. But she interestingly wondered if she had the wrong uh, reports from the first visit. And that is always what they say. There is never the possibility that there is something out there that actually works besides what I do and maybe works better. She assumed that ah, maybe this was the wrong lab report or maybe this was, just, this was just the wrong patient or maybe there was an error the first time. It wasn't possible that someone else could have gotten those results. And that is always what happens with a radical recovery of some kind or a radical healing of some kind. Instead of there being an open-minded, that is interesting, from a scientific point of view, that's interesting and way less invasive than surgery. 
I would love to know what that is. That is what a scientist would approach it as. But that is never, frankly, what I see. So much of the time, there's just a dismissal of that. And even worse with cancer, patients who far outlive their prognosis or have a very amazing recovery, there's almost never interest from the oncologist. It's just, you got lucky, it was the one in a million radical spontaneous remission, it wasn't related, it might have just happened on its own. There's a disinterest even. And this is very discouraging to me. So ultimately, in my experience, people only see what they want to see and they only believe what they want to believe. Even in a profession of supposed so-called scientists that want to see all the evidence, I find that physicians, like any other person, are prone to the exact same cognitive and logical biases as we all are. And we all want to believe that we're right and that we've been the hero of the day. But I want to leave you with this one quote from Nikola Tesla, something that I've plastered on my wall in my clinic because it is something that helps me remember what's most important. Nikola Tesla said, the scientific man does not aim at an immediate result. He does not expect that his advanced ideas will be readily taken up. His work is like that of the planter for the future. His duty is to lay the foundation for those who are to come and point the way. So no matter what I do, whether it is a radical remission or just fixing a simple issue like bloating, my goal is always to lead the way. And whether it takes a decade or 50 years or 100 years or never for conventional medicine to accept that what this does can produce incredible clinical results, that is my goal. And the rest is up to fate. So I'm going to leave you here, guys, a very important discussion because this woman was not the only one that heard that TCM is bullshit, right? And she won't be the last one. So. I thought I would share something to provide another point of view. Before you go, check out those other related links right below this video, and I will see you soon.